Hey, 49ers fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Chat Sports, and today we are grading the 49ers win over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, hang on. Before we get going, take a second, turn to your neighbor. If you're sitting home alone, high five yourself. The 49ers are 3 0. Let's be honest, okay? Preseason, how many of us expected to be 3 0? I think a lot of you expected it to be good. And I was kind of teetering on 8 8, 9 7, 10, wherever we were, right? But the fact the Niners are 3-0 is unbelievable. I'm so excited. I know you guys are too. Let's grade this game because I think in the national media, people are giving their own grades right now, their own thoughts on the game. I went back and re-watched it again this morning. A lot jumped off the page. Let's start overall with the offensive grade. Listen, I could rip the 49ers offensive grade here. Last night, I'm getting ready for bed. I'm thinking in my head, you know, what are we doing for the grades tomorrow? What am I going to do? And I was like, oh, you know, the offense, have five turnovers. Obviously, you got to give them a low grade. Not when you put the film on. You put the film on of what happened on offense yesterday, the offense was firing on all cylinders. They get a B plus. If you would have just had two turnovers instead of five, it might have gotten an A plus. That's how good they were. It should have been six turnovers, okay? Let's just get that out of the way. Five turnovers is terrible. A ton in the red zone, we all know this. Yet, with all that said, they still had 436 total yards of offense and rushed again for over 150 yards. 168 yards on the ground. Jimmy Garoppolo in this game with the film on was absolutely fantastic. Now the O-line struggled. They didn't, give up, they didn't give up a lot of sacks, but they did struggle in pass protection. However, Garoppolo's quick release, I mean, was getting the ball out of there as fast as possible. They went on drive after drive, and the only thing that was stopping them was turnovers. If they did not have turnovers in this football game, or even had two turnovers in this football game, this is a blowout. The Niners are winning this game 35-0. They might have even dropped 40 on the Pittsburgh Steelers, but five drive-killing turnovers are the reason it was not more than 24 points. It's a B+. Plus. The offense was very, very good. It might have been the best offensive performance of the year if you take away the turnovers. That's why they get a B+. Plus. What grade would you guys give the 49ers offense? I know, I know, I know. Turnovers are bad. They kill teams. They kill drives. They can make you lose football games. Not the case yesterday. I give them a B plus. Let me know what you guys think down below. The defense, just when you thought last week the defense could not could not get any better, they got better. They got better this week against a good football team. Now, I know it was Mason Rudolph. And I know it wasn't Big Ben. And so you're like, okay, well, they didn't beat a great quarterback yet. They still have a ton of talent on that football team. And the defense continues to ball out. Held the Steelers to only 20 points, 79 yards rushing. James Conner did virtually nothing, had less than 50 yards on, I think, 11 or 12 carries overall, 160 yards passing, 0 for 1 in the red zone. This defense, guys, I, you know, you can only give them so much credit week in and week out before you start sounding like, you know, just, just repeat yourself, repeat yourself, but they keep getting even better. Listen, the defensive line is balling out so, so, so well. Now, Statlin, only two sacks. You go, oh. Okay, well, only two sacks, that's not that great. But much like how Garoppolo was constantly under pressure, Mason Rudolph was under pressure like times eight of what Garoppolo was. I mean, he was constantly running for his life, constantly getting hit, and it forced bad throws and was able to force some of the interceptions that you saw, including the Kawan Williams interception, which was all, you know, pressure and then a bad throw. Now, they did give up the deep ball to Juju Smith-Schuster, and then Barrett gave up the deep ball on the left side. I forget who the receiver was, but it was that 39-yard touchdown. Those were two coverage issues, but more the Barrett one than the Schuster. Uh, the Smith Schuster one, that was just good work, or good route running, good tackle breaking by Juju. But overall, the defense is special. I mean, the, the if, if you were worried about the offense at all, and you're like, well, can Jimmy Garoppolo produce? Can the offensive line hold up? How are their receivers? If you're worried about that side of the football, the defense literally plugs so many holes. And the offense was great yesterday. I already mentioned it. But this defense is so good, it can elevate the offense. And together, that's the reason why we're 3-0. If this defense keeps going, and I see no reason to think that they're going to stop playing bad anytime soon. It's a top five defense, and it will compete for one of the best defenses in the entire league as we go out the rest of the season. I know it's early. I know that you're talking about, you know, it wins over Andy Dalton. You're talking about wins over uh, Mason Rudolph. But at the same time, they're showing that they can be a good, good, good football team and winning against good football teams here over the next couple of weeks. Final here, special teams. We always do it. Not much to talk about in this one. They get an A-. minus. Richie James Jr. had a nice 15-yard punt return, which was better than he did last week. Wisnowski averaged 50 yards per punt, and Robbie Gold hit his only field goal. So, 
You know, like, they didn't really do much, but they were fine. No mistakes. A- minus right now for these special teams. Guys, quickly, be sure to subscribe to our 49ers-only YouTube channel. We're approaching 2,000 subscribers. If you're watching it on our chat sports page right now, go, go to the Google or the, uh, the YouTube search bar right, like right here, right, 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 right above me. Search, duh, or search chat sports 49ers. Click on the one with uh, Kyle Shanahan's head. Subscribe, and then come on back to this video. We'll keep going, though. Okay. Listen, Jimmy Garoppolo is our first guy that we are going to grade individually. He was fantastic in this football game. He gets an A+. I was reading some other people's grades, and they were giving him like a C-. I'm like, did you even watch the film? Listen, the stats are not going to jump off the page. 23 of 32, 277 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, but the film leaps off of the page. He had more pressure in his face than he had the first two weeks combined. It felt like to me, and yet his quick release, that throwing motion that we love about Jimmy Garoppolo, was putting balls in people's hands even when he did not have the time to do so. I mean, you're talking about snap, pressure in the face, quick release, first down, especially across the middle. A lot of those deep ends that they were running with Debo Samuel and also running, I think, with Marquise Goodwin, built off of the play action, Garoppolo would have people in his face and still deliver the ball down the field. He was absolutely fantastic. All the fumbles, you know, I really don't want to blame him on that one. Plus, he has the game-winning drive. I mean, they're down, right? They are down in this football game. Got to have a touchdown to go, to, to go out and win. He goes down the field, throws the touchdown to Dante Pettis. He was absolutely fantastic. This was the best Jimmy Garoppolo game I might have seen in the past I'm trying to think back. Like, I'm trying to think back the, the, the last time I saw a better Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, he's been good, and he was good the first two weeks, but you went from week one to where we are week three. It's like leaps and bounds, light years away. This is the Jimmy Garoppolo we paid all that money for to acquire from the Pittsburghs or to acquire from the uh, New, England, New England Patriots. He's balling out. He keeps this going. I mean, we're talking a Pro Bowl type year for Jimmy Garoppolo. He gets an A. Plus, what grade would you guys give Jimmy Garoppolo against the Steelers? Are there any Jimmy Garoppolo haters out there today? I mean, I, I like, I don't. I've been critical. I was critical in the preseason because I saw what I saw. You know, I'm a big film guy. You watch the film and it's like, ooh, bad throw. Ooh, bad throw. Ooh, interception. I'm watching the film now and it's like, he was great yesterday. He was so good. So, if there's anyone out there, any Jimmy Garoppolo haters, let me know because I, I don't think that they should be. But again, I read all the comments. So, if you had a problem with Jimmy Garoppolo yesterday, maybe with fumbles because of his running backs or his one or two interceptions. I don't know. He was great yesterday. Let's just move on. Although quickly, because the Niners are doing so, so well, and this Chat Sports 49er YouTube page continues to grow and grow, we have our own Bet DSI promo code. Yes, use the 49ers, uh, use, use the promo code 49ers120 when you go to chatsports.com forward slash bet to get the best deposit bonus in the entire game. We're talking 120% deposit bonus when you sign up and deposit with our friends at Bet DSI. Listen, the Niners are hot. Betting on the Niners has never been more lucrative. So turn like 100 bucks into 220 bucks to bet with this deal. Again, chatsports.com forward slash bet using the promo code 49ers120. Okay, next grade that we're going to go here is Raheem Mostert, but you know I like to kind of put all the running backs into this category as well. Listen, the running game is still super, super, super elite. I think we're going to crawl into the top three right now in rushing. We were four last week, but 168 yards again should put us into the top three. I highlight Mostert here. He gets a B- minus because he, again, shows the speed, shows the excellent burst ability, is really reading holes very, very well, but you cannot have a fumble and in the red zone and a fumble earlier that results in a 16-yard loss that you are lucky to fall on. Brita played well today. Jeff Wilson, I mean, I mean listen, Brita, Wilson, whatever, all the running backs had their fumble issues, it felt like. Jeff Wilson, two rushing touchdowns, you know, kind of towards the goal line. Brita was good today. Mostert was good today as well, but he is one of the reasons why we had five turnovers, so you got to knock him down a grade. Again, the Niners would have had an A-plus rushing grade had not, you know, with maybe one fumble. So today, you got to gotta bring it back. We'll give him Raheem Mostert and the running backs a B-. minus. Okay, next person on this list is Dante Pettis. And I know, it's like, well, what did Dante Pettis do? Four catches for 20 yards. He had five targets. Listen, he got on the field and caught more than one pass. That is a trending up trend that's happening right now with Dante Pettis. Listen, we thought preseason this guy could be one of the best two receivers on this football team. Has not been there, whether it's coach's decision or the injury. It's kind of a combination of both. He has struggled to even really see game action. And yet, was able to get, you know, five targets, was able to catch four passes, and the big reason he made my grading list, he caught the game-winning touchdown in traffic. Jimmy Garoppolo trusted 
game on the line, a very tight window to Dante Pettis to win the football game. We've got to give him a B-plus in this football game. His grade hopefully can continue to rise as the season progresses. But for me, I just wanted to hit on it because I've been hard on Dante Pettis. You guys have been hard on him too. I wanted to share, and you, know, you, you guys are watching, that he did play well enough to warrant a grade and caught the game-winning touchdown pass. Hopefully this springboards him the rest of the year, right? This is his game where he's like, okay, especially if it's up here, right? If it's the mental problems, that's kind of been an issue. Like he's mentally not been ready or not been confident. Maybe this is the confidence boost that he needed. I hope it is, but Dante Pettis definitely a B-plus on a day where the receivers were good. You know, De Debo Samuel had a big drop, you know, when it was that, um, that that deep in route. He had a chance to catch it, but also had some good plays. Marquise Goodwin had good plays. Kyle Juszczyk, I mean, are you kidding me? How about that How about that catch diving out for the football and then catching the ball and stiff-arming Minka Fitzpatrick? I mean, overall, the receivers were what they were. They were good, not great, but I like to I like to, I like to write saw from Dante Pettis in terms of catching the game-winning touchdown. Hopefully, it springs him forward for the rest of the year. Okay, which receiver impressed you guys the most yesterday? Which one is it? Use check, right? Is it Pettis game winner? Is it Samuel? Someone else? Let me know in the comments section down below. Okay, a couple of quick defensive grades here. This is more of an entire defensive line grade, but DeForest Buckner balled out of his mind. He gets an A+. Plus. The entire defensive line, I would argue, should get an A+, plus as well. They ate all day. I mean, they were coming after Mason Rudolph constantly, and that's what you gotta do. You make a rookie quarterback unhappy un, uh, in the pocket, make him a little bit nervous in the pocket, he's gonna throw the ball to you more often than not. And the, the stat line for DeForest Buckner is insane. Eight tackles, one sack, two quarterback hits, had the fumble recovery late, which was very, very big. The defense got the sacks when they needed to, only two, Credit D Ford also for playing hurt and still playing very, very well. Got the sacks when they needed to, got the interception when they needed to, got the fumble when they needed to. They're doing what they need to do when they need to do it, and they're playing excellent, excellent football up front. A-plus for uh, DeForest Buckner, A-plus for everyone on that defensive line. Okay, the one struggle, it seems like there's always someone on the defense who does have kind of a bad day, and that'd have to be... Jason Barrett, who we've been clamoring for in the comments section, right? You have been wanting to see Jason Barrett for a while. They've slowly eased him back from his injury, and he finally got to be on the field today, albeit because of the Witherspoon injury, which we'll hopefully have an update for you guys tomorrow, as again, he was carted off the field. No big news happening as of when this video was released. So they bring Barrett in, and you gotta give him a C-. I mean, he comes in, and they immediately start picking on him here, and he gives up the 32-yard pass interference, and then the 39-yard touchdown pass as well. A lot of people have asked for him to see a lot more time at the cornerback position. I don't know if it was just first game nerves, or if he's not fully healthy, or, you know, just gotta get his feet wet. I don't know what it was, but they picked on him, and he did not have the best of game. He gets the worst grade out of anybody that I'm grading today with a C-. minus. But hopefully, one, Witherspoon will be okay, which is like... I don't know, I mean, a card on the field is never a good sign. We'll see, we'll update you guys tomorrow in our news and rumors video, but hopefully Barrett can see the field more and more and more, regardless of whether he's starting or backup or, or slot or whatever, and get better to the, to the player that we kind of expect him to be. So he gets a C minus. And then finally, and this one's easy, we always talk about kind of mistakes, you know, preparation, whatever you want to call it. The, the mistakes and penalties is an F minus today. Now the penalties weren't back breaking, he had nine penalties last week, only five for 71 yards, but 71 yards is a lot of penalty yards overall. I know a lot of that came from the Verrett pass interference, but the penalties are still something. I want to get down to under five a game for less than 50 yards, or somewhere I want to live in terms of being a healthy, a healthy penalized team, if that makes sense. But the real reason they get an F minus on mistakes, you can't have five turnovers. Like, I mean, this is this cannot happen as a football team. Should have been six. The fumble by Mostert should have been number six. And I think. Was there one more that should have been a fumble? I'm trying to remember. There was just so many. It was like every single drive was like, oh, turnover. Oh, here you go, turnover. Oh, here you go, turnover. Got to clean that up. What's crazy to me, our turnover margin after six turnovers or five turnovers is still only minus one. So in reality, we're not a big turnover team. The defense creates more than the offense. But again, got to clean that up. F minus. It's fine. The overall take those guys. You can give me your week two, or sorry, week three grade performance overall of the Steeler game. Let me know what that is down below. But the overall thought process is we're 3-0, and right? I mean, just think about that. We're 3-0, and one of the few 3-0 and teams in the entire National Football League. Where do we rank in the NFC in terms of best football teams? Like, like, like you talk about schedule being one thing. Where do we rank against the other elite teams in the NFC? 
I'll talk about that tomorrow on our news and rumors video. But then again, there you go. That is all the grades for our week three win against the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Niners are 3-0. and You're happy. I'm happy. 4-0 coming next week. I don't know. We got plenty of more 49ers stuff coming up this week. So be sure to subscribe to Chat Sports down below. And for Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott. Signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.